so glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to Chicago and the famed Aragon Ballroom for tonight's main event. 12 rounds among heavyweights between these two great warriors. Okay, guys, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's touch gloves. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Two guys that can really take each other out. What's the best means of defense? Well, if one guy says to himself, I'm not the power puncher, then he has to be smart. He has to be technically solid in all areas. He's going to have the edge. Off target with that hook. And just as we anticipated, toe-to-toe -to -toe right from the start. No introductions necessary. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Blocks that punch. Way to block there. Holy cow! That uppercut absolutely out, rocked him. Boy, I don't like the way his legs look at all right now. Good defensive skill with the block by bad intentions. Teddy, he went from being on the edge of the cliff to now climbing back up the mountain. Well, you know, that's where you want to know if a guy recovers fast. Obviously, he has the capacity to recover very quickly. Oh, very nice. Smart counterpunch there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make the guy miss, you make him pay. What happened to the get to know you? They're getting to know each other real quick here. Unbelievable. I feel like I'm at a fancy restaurant and we've already had four courses and the chef came out and said, hey, don't be full yet. You got eight more to go. What do you think is most misunderstood about the heavyweight division? I think it's human nature for people to see these big goliaths, that they start to think that, hey, they're more sure of themselves, that these guys have more of an abundance of security about themselves, about confidence. And really, it's the opposite. In some ways, these big giants, they're really unsure of themselves because they know they can do damage. They're also worried about damage being done to them. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Well-targeted two-punch combo by bad intentions. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter-punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. by bad intentions here's one for you now he says right back with the left hand back to fight action as a new round is underway of course in that last round it was fairly one-sided. He was hit pretty hard, and now he has to overcome that here. Yeah, you don't have to be Nostradamus to know that. I mean, everybody saw, you know, he got staggered, his knees buckled, did a little dance there. But what you have to really know now is know why you got hit and correct that immediately. There it is! Oh, he gets hit by a left hand that he had no clue on. Well-placed counter-punch by bad intentions. He was damaged moments ago, but now he's got his feet back under him. Foreman's showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Not able to land the headshot. Big George Foreman, originally from Marshall, Texas, whereas a youth, Teddy, 
He was involved in a lot of street fights. I mean, he had a reputation as the kind of guy that you didn't mess with out and about. You know, we've had a lot of fighters that have come out that route. Boxing has saved, has turned a lot of young men who were in trouble on the streets, turned them into not only world champions, but, you know, world champions as people, people that could serve society. Foreman is one of those young men. Well-placed right hands from both men. Halfway through this round here. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Scores well to the belt line again. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Oh, what an impactful left hand by George Foreman. Was just off the mark. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Not able to land the uppercut. End of the round here, and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was, and you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. Able to cover up that gut. Punch. Oh, and there you go. George Foreman's legs look shaky. He was hurt. There are different kinds of power punchers, Teddy. Some are sharp and accurate. Some are thudding and impactful. Where does George Foreman lie on that scale? A bludgeoning kite puncher, a guy that you have a headache for about a week. He hits you with such thudding punches that it starts to just break you down as time goes on. But either way, he intimidates you with the force of the punch, with the effect of the punch, and the knowledge that he's in front of you with that ability. A good block. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Foreman's tagged by another hook. He has taken a lot of punishment here. Well, the special fighters find a way, even when it's desperate like this, to survive. He's got to find that way right now. Some fine fundamentals. Good counterpunch. Nice mousetrap. They let him in beautifully. He didn't use cheese. He used distance. Foreman dismisses that with a block. Good-looking counterpunch. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Foreman's movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. 
Ten seconds to go in this third round. Keep working the dash. Able to counter that attack. So we come to the end of the round. And clearly a confidence booster for this man. He got to his opponent. He was able to stun him. Teddy, when a fighter comes back after doing what he just did, do you see them almost light up, like get a little boost of energy because of that? Yeah, it does build your confidence a little bit. You know, it makes you feel more secure. I can control this man. I had my way. Missed targeted. George Foreman's punch stats are really telling a story here right now. I noticed that they've been dropping ever since he got stunned earlier in this fight. Yeah, you know, anybody could keep their punch numbers up when everything is normal. But when you've been stunned, and it's not just stunned, I think physically he's overcoming, but he should intimidate a little bit. Now is the real testing of the fighter. He's got to put that aside and perform the way he came here to perform. on the offensive. Good block there by bad intentions. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. George Foreman's got to deal with a cut around his eye. Now, it looks like it's below his eye, so we'll see what kind of effect it has. Parries that punch away. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. <laughs> he just missed that shot up top. Bleeding from his cheek. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. Turn that hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. Teddy, what do you think here as we start this round? I mean, you watch what he did in that last round, and you got to think that he can get himself back into this fight. Well, that's how he's got to be thinking it. That's kind of what he's made up of. He's not a front runner. You know, he's not a fast starter anyway. He's the kind of guy that his real strength. There it is! George Foreman's almost out of it there. He was stunned. Foreman's showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that part. It is unbelievable how this fight is being fought. Both guys unwilling to stop. One guy goes at it. The other guy meets him punch for punch. Well, you've heard it before. You've heard the term used one day at a time to deal with something very difficult. Well, this is one round at a time. That is the only way these fighters, these warriors, can deal with this kind of pace. One of the most famous calls in all sports broadcasting is down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Well, there's a reason down went Frazier. It was because of the big shots of George Foreman. That was one of the great calls, of course, by Howard Cosell. And it was not just a big shot. It was the right plan shot. See, that's where Foreman deserves a little credit for being more than just a hulking guy, a powerful guy. He picked the right punch, the uppercut, the perfect punch at that moment to land on Joe Frazier. 
Halfway through what is one of the best rounds you'll ever see. Just great action. Now, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come to this fight. You stay right here. Bad Intentions is doing a great job right there on the inside, smartly landing shots. Able to block that away, it was targeted for his head. And a smart counter punch by Bad Intentions. Bad Intentions is being very efficient right here. I mean, he's just picking his shots. His accuracy is through the roof. Well, that's one of the talents, and you hope is a talent, of a top fighter. is his ability to pick his shots, to be calm enough to see the openings. He's seeing everything right now. come to the end of the round and he really got to his opponent that time Teddy. he stunned him oh uh, he stunned him he's hearing a little tweeting going on a little singing from the birds in his head bad intentions is doing a good job tonight on the outside he's able to score from the outside keeping a safe distance away from his opponent foreman sitting here wondering why he's getting hit so much how about this you're not moving your head at all well how about don't wonder about it you weren't taught that probably in the gym you didn't work on that in the gym well it's not going to come to you suddenly when you're in the arena. Good looking right hand after he got hit. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Get in there, let's go. Good looking counter punch. George Foreman's opponent's probably looking at him right now saying, wow, you're not changing anything up. You know, he got to him moments ago. Now, he's got the same style that he's looking at again. Yeah, but he got to him moments ago. Got to him. One time. I think right now it's too early to all of a sudden throw everything out the window. But... Look for an adjustment if things don't change. If he can't get away from those punches, if he keeps having problems, he gets stunned again, then you might have to look for a change. You might have to make a change if you're going to survive. A stinging counterpunch after some fine defense by bad intentions. You always say punchers are born, Teddy. But what about a guy's ability to withstand big punches? What about a guy's chin? You know, that's an interesting point. Part of it is physical, and you know what it is? It's the neck. That's the shock absorber, but most of it is mental. You have to want to take the punches. You have to will yourself through the punches. This guy has some will. 60 seconds to go in what has been a toe-to-toe -to -toe war. Oh, what a great round. With the body. Punch. This is just perfect. I mean, just what I want to see when I come to the fight. Sign me up for this kind of a brawl any day of the week. You know, it's unbelievable. You feel like you've already witnessed an entire war, but you're reminded it's only one of the battles. We still have many more to go. <laughs> Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Come to the end of the round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds 
where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Good block by George. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing one-on-one, counter-punching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. why we love the sport teddy i mean this is just back and forth action non-stop well joe what special events have happened in history you remember where you are right now i'm going to remember where i was during this fight i'm watching a special epic right in front of me glad to be here doing it too what a war this is Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Oh, very nice, smart counter punch there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make the guy miss, you make him pay. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. That's a good block by bad intentions. Oh, George Foreman's in a bad spot right now. He's been stunned. And now he's working well on the inside. Good job protecting himself. And there he counters back against his opponent. Another round. Will it go in another one-way direction? It's been a one-sided fight so far tonight. Nice work with the jab on the outside. Bad intentions is in position right now to really bring home a good victory. He's up on the punch stats. He's up on your scorecard. This is his fight. Yeah, we just hope that the judges, and you never know that. That's one thing that sometimes can really disappoint you in this business. You hope the judges see it that way because I can't see it any other way. Good counter punch. George Foreman's got a cut. It looks like it's below the eye on the cheek, but it's something that needs to be monitored. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. George Foreman's not sticking to his style at all. He got away from what had gotten him in trouble. Remember, he was rocked earlier. Yeah, it's like being in the Grand Prix. You know, you're in that race, and all of a sudden you pull into the pit, and you say, you know what? I got to change my tires. You know, I'm just not getting traction out here. You know, I almost went into a wall. Well, he's changing his tires, changing his plan. <laughs> Solid counter punch by bad intentions. And now another left. Here comes the left hand. 
What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. after getting tagged himself. Good counter punch. Oh, look at that. They exchange hooks. As another round gets underway, it gets us thinking how much more of this will we see. Hard to envision this fight going the distance with how lopsided it's been. A headshot blocks. Foreman's mounting a comeback here, Teddy. Thinks we're going against him. Punch it out, now guys. the tide is turned. Good things come to those who wait or those who persevere. He perseveres, good things are happening. off the mark with that punch. Really wanted that uppercut, but just couldn't get it. Big block by Big George. Foreman's really being tested, and it may be a test that he actually failed before this fight, because I don't know that he came in in tip-top shape. I just don't like the way he looks in terms of being a well-conditioned athlete right now. Yeah, well, he looks a little soft. We talked about that. He looks like his body tone's not what it could have been, and also his weight was a little heavy. He's paying a price in those areas right now. What a great round. Two minutes in, 60 seconds to go. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Holy cow! George Foreman's finding himself on the canvas. Knocked down there! One, two, three, four! What a way to end the night with a knockout. You saw it coming. Problem is, he didn't see it. To cap it all, we send it up to the ring. He's your winner by impressive knockout victory. And he did it just the way he had to. Stayed on the outside and used those quick hands all night. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. We'll see you next time ringside.